Hey there, and welcome to my channel. I'm Crafty Kathy, the owner and creator of Kids Vintage Farmhouse in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I am so happy and thankful that you stopped in to craft and spend a little time with me today. The last few weeks, I have been organizing my stash and using only the stuff that I have for my DIYs. And I have done a few planner videos and you guys really, really like those videos and have responded well to them. And this weekend, I was putting some flowers out in one of my Dollar Tree um, planters. And I thought, my goodness, I have so many Dollar Tree and Dollar General planters. I need to do a video on those because I definitely need to use them. And that's how this video came about. So, I hope that you guys like this one and let's just jump on in. We're going to start off with this little flower box that I made previously. I will leave the video where I made this down below. It's made with all Dollar Tree stuff. And I haven't put real plants in there yet. If you want to, you can just drill holes in the bottom. You can see I use that Dollar Tree wallpaper. I do not like it. And it just needs a little upcycle. First thing I need to do is paint it. And I want to paint this black. I want to use DIY paint called Black Velvet. It is my favorite black paint of all time. It literally does look like black velvet when you're finished. I just wanted to cover this up, give it a new fresh start, and make it beautiful again. On the sides, if any of the wallpaper was kind of coming up, which it really wasn't, I just kind of sanded because DIY paint is clay based and it will cover and lay perfectly on anything, even on this wallpaper. I only put one coat on this, and it absolutely is gorgeous. This paint is amazing, and it will cover anything. I want to say thank you so much for stopping by to spend a little bit of time with me today. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit that little red subscribe button and become a part of it. And you would not believe in the last few weeks when I have been telling people, even if you think that you're subscribed, double check because YouTube has been unsubscribing people to channels for some crazy reason. And I have had about a hundred people who they unsubscribed from my channel who didn't want to be unsubscribed. So if you will, just please go and double check and make sure that you are subscribed because I have some very exciting news that I'm about to share with you guys and you definitely want to be a subscriber. But after I finished painting this, I went ahead and grabbed this transfer. It's from one of the IOD Femoral Melange and it's so beautiful. It says Northern Grown Seeds and as you can see, the whole thing is not going to fit on there. So I kind of like push in with my fingernail so I know which place on that grid where I'm going to cut straight across. The IOD transfers have these little grids on there which makes it super easy for you to know where to cut. If you want to try out any of the IOD or DIY paint, a lot of the things that you see me use in my video, I get from Lori over at Milton's Daughter, and I leave her information in the comment section and in the description box. Now, the exciting news that I was talking about is I'm going to do a giveaway of an IOD transfer, and this giveaway is going to be for subscribers only. So make sure you're subscribed and I do check and make sure you are. So don't try to pull a fast one over on me. And all you have to do to be entered into the giveaway for the transfer is go to the comment section and just simply put in the word transfer. And I know you want in. And guys, other than that, just good luck. I'm going to give it away next Monday during my video. You know that these transfers are anywhere between $18 and $40, so I'm very excited about this giveaway. Now here, all I'm doing is putting my transfer on. I just laid it down, and I use that little tool to, you know, rub it off. And I also use my fingernail because, to me, a lot of times that's easier. Now, this Dollar Tree crate that I'm using here had the little lines in there, so I just went back with the little tool and ran through that transfer because I like that look. You don't have to do that, but I really do like that look. 
Now, the IOD transfers is just a very easy way to take any project from like Dollar Tree to high end. Look how gorgeous and what a difference it made just by putting this transfer on. Now here I'm using my favorite Pentart paste. I compare this stuff to Rub and Buff. It's amazing. It's just cheaper than Rub and Buff and I get it from Lori over at Milton's Daughter. All I'm doing is putting it on my finger and going around and applying it anywhere where I think it would look good. I flipped my little crate over to the other side because I don't want just a one-sided wonder. I want it to look beautiful from both ways. And you can just take bits and pieces of these transfers and make something gorgeous. So here what I did was take the bottom half of that picture that I had cut off on the other side and I'm applying it to this side. I do the exact same thing. I peel off that white backing. I lay my transfer down and I use that little tool that they sent me and I also use my fingernail to get the transfer down. On this side, I did the exact same thing except for this time I went through with an X-Acto knife to cut the little lines that's there in the crates. I very lightly, lightly used some sandpaper with my little finger sander here and just kind of sanded it where I wanted and I applied that beautiful bronze just in places where I thought that it would need it. And that's all it took for this one. It's so simple, but like I said, it went from Dollar Tree to fabulous. And I hope you like this first one. Now the next one is a little planner that I made with Dollar Tree materials. This has been made a million times over, but I've never made one of these. I took three of these little nesting boxes and you can put real plants in these, but I would only use succ succulents because they are so shallow. You don't wanna put anything that's gonna have long roots. And actually succulents do good in stuff like this. You just make sure that you drill a couple of holes in here for some drainage. So I started out by getting all the little front tags or whatever you call those little things off. I just use those small eyeglass kits from Dollar Tree. They are great for stuff like that. And what I need to do is put two of these Jenga blocks. I didn't really have anything else that I could use, and I needed something to separate, you know, all three of the different nesting boxes. So what I ended up doing is putting two of these together, and I did that for a total of 13 on this very first one. So in other words, for the first one here, I'm going to need 26 of these little Jenga blocks and you just put them together two by two like we're going on Noah's Ark and you just put them together there until you build up 13. I decided to use the quick bond or quick and thick because I just think that it's the best wood glue there is. And once these dry, they're not going anywhere. But until then, I did have a little bit of trouble trying to keep them still because I was trying to finish my project while it was still wet. It's best to go ahead and do your little Jenga blocks and let them sit and let them dry and form. I put some more of the glue in the back of the nesting box and underneath where I'm going to put my little Jenga blocks. That way we're gonna have a good solid hold. 
I simply just put enough glue on the bottom and up the side to give it a hold and it really doesn't take that much. And then I left it alone for a little while so it could start to set up. I wanted my second nesting box to have a good firm foundation to sit on and I was afraid that the Jenga blocks wasn't just enough space by themselves. So I took this small rectangle of balsa wood that I have from Hobby Lobby. It's almost like cardboard or something. It's so easy to bend. What I did was just took my cutters and I cut a decent sized piece off of there and I had to kind of use some sandpaper on the edges because I did a terrible cut, but you're never going to see that. So the way that I attached these two boxes was by taking that piece of balsa wood and gluing it with tight bond glue and just a little bit of hot glue right in the center of the medium box. And then I'm going to glue that with tight bond glue and hot glue to the top of the Jenga block and I made sure to kind of offset my medium box. I don't want it right over the top of the large one. I set that aside and let it just start to dry, and I took a single row of the Jenga blocks, and I used seven of those on top of each other, and we're going to do that exact same thing in the medium box. I didn't need as much of the Jenga blocks, so instead of doing rows of two, we're just doing one. And on the bottom, like I said, there's 13 high, and then on the medium box, we did seven high. I did the exact same thing with that little piece of balsa wood. I put down the tight bond quick and thick and hot glue, and then I took that smallest little nesting box and offset it to the very top. I set it to the side so that it could dry, and then I took these little tabs that goes on the front, and I liked the way that they looked because I had them outside um, on my porch, on my craft porch for a while, and so they looked weathered, you know, so I took a little bit of that bronze paste that I absolutely love, put it on my finger, and just went around each of those and the screws. I then took my nesting boxes outside and I spray painted them with my Rust-Oleum two times in a color called Sage Green. I'm going to use some of these beautiful transfers that was sent to me by Essential Stencils. Now they are a company that's out of Australia and I know that I use the IOD transfers all the time. They are my top favorite and they cannot be beat. But if you want to put it in order, the essential stencils are right under the IOD in my book. Now, these are great stencils for the money. They're a little bit cheaper than IOD. But like I said, the IOD is just so very detailed. But these are gorgeous too. So I just went through and picked out what I wanted and we're going to place it on the nesting boxes. I started off with this limb from the tree that is this beautiful pink cherry blossoms, and it's the largest of the transfers, so I put it on the bottom. Now, you do these transfers the same way that you do the IOD. You do all transfers the same. You pull off that white backing, you lay it down, and then you use the little tool that, the, actually the tool that I have is the one that was sent from IOD. And I like to use that tool, but a lot of time on smaller pieces like these, I find that my fingernail is so much easier to use. But you just rub it until the transfer comes off. It doesn't take much at all, and it just transfers onto your piece. And then you take it off, and I like to use my fingers to kind of go over it and press it down, make sure that I have a good connection, and then I like to burnish it. And that just means you take that little plastic piece that it just came off of and kind of rub it in a circle over each transfer and it gives it a really secure connection. Now, after I put my transfers on, I always go over it with my Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. It's a sealer. You definitely want to make sure that you seal your transfers so that they won't come up. Next, I decided to take this little bird and put him down on the bottom. 
Now, like I said, you can use bits and pieces of your transfers. The whole bird and his little tail and feet wouldn't fit on there, but this absolutely just kind of set it off and made it so cute. And then I went back through and put all of those tags back on. I took the little screws and just screwed them right back in where they belong. On the next part, you really couldn't see what I was doing at all because I could not lay my nesting boxes down because they were still drying and I was afraid that it was going to fall apart. But I just added a couple of more transfers and I hope you like this one. She thinks I'm a little lazy. I think she's a little crazy. We like summer and we like spring. Watching wrestling and rain. She ain't shy, she speaks her mind Tough as nails and smooth as wine We burn hot as kerosene Baby, we got our own thing She ain't skinny and I ain't tall And that don't bother us at all I run naked through the yard She flash every police car Drinking wine and getting tired and Shooting out the damn street lights How does she put up with me? Baby, we got our... DIY number three is very simple like the other ones have been. These are two planters that I picked up at Dollar General just this spring. And these are only $3 a piece. And you can see they're these gorgeous birds. But I'm not really crazy about the glossy finish. And I'm not really crazy about the pink one. Now, I had bought two succulents at Walmart about a week ago when I was doing my succulent video. And these poor things were only $2. They were on clearance, but I am bringing these back to life. I planted them in these little birds, and so I already had them planted in here. And we're just going to kind of go around them the best that I can since I already have them planted. I don't want to disturb them, and we're going to paint them. We're going to use this beautiful color. It's one of the new Waverly colors by DIY Paint. And it's called Extra Electrical. <laughs> but I really do love these new colors, and you don't have to seal them. Normally with DIY paints, you have to seal them after you paint because they can become reactivated. But these already have the sealer built in. So I just ended up going around this little bird, and it really only took one coat. And then I just let it dry. And if there were spots that kind of looked streaky or needed a little bit more, I would go over it there. I had two of these little birds. And on the second one, I used a beautiful green color that I don't use often. It's DIY paint called Salty Kiss. Here I'm going to use some more of the transfers from Essential Stencils, and these were called Rustic Summer. They sent me these last year at the very end of summer, and I didn't even get to use them because fall was already coming around. So I just cut out a few of the flowers that I needed because I don't need big images. I just need small ones, just something to give this a little pop. So I cut out a couple of flowers and a couple of little bees. And I want you to look at that beautiful, vibrant color on that blue bird. He is sexier than socks on a rooster. So I chose this really simple transfer. It's just a beautiful rose, and it was just small enough to fit on this bird. Now remember these little birds had like indentions all in them, like a little design. And I find it best to lay it down and start off on the right and just kind of work my way over in a row. You can absolutely transfer, put your transfers on anything as long as you just take your time and just work slowly. I did this one really slow because of all the little indentions. I didn't want it to be broken up or look funny. 
and then I burnished it with that piece of plastic that I just took it off of. And then I added a sweet little bee like he was trying to land on the flower. These are absolutely breathtaking transfers. On my little green birdie that I used that color called Salty Kiss on, I just took one of the sunflowers because I thought that yellow would really pop against the green. Now, this is a little bit bigger transfer, and in case you notice me cutting the transfer, it just makes it easier to put it down that way when it's on a surface that's uneven. And don't worry, it doesn't look funny, and it doesn't look like, you know, like it's been cut. You just cut it where you need to, as far in as you need to, far into the center, and place it down. And then I put a sweet little bee up at the top like he was landing on the sunflower. Now we're going to use this beautiful bronze wax paste that I have been wearing out the past couple of weeks. This will take any project up a million notches. And I really like this bronze color better than I do the gold. It just fits me. But they do have gold. They have like a metallic white, a metallic blue and green. I've used all the different colors in my past videos the last few weeks. And the more I use them, the more I love them. I just went all around the bird with the bronze paste on my finger and went into all the indentions and made sure to color his little beak. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on this electric bluebird. That color that they named that is absolutely correct. It's like electric. It, it, it's just the color is crazy bright and it's beautiful. I can just imagine these sitting out by the pool this summer and all the conversations we're going to have about how pretty he is. Now this is me out by the pool whenever I was putting the succulents into these little planters before I even painted them. You see how that one has new growth. I'm so excited because you don't understand how awful these things looked when I bought them. I wasn't sure if they were going to live or die, but I honestly think that both of them is going to make it, especially since the one has new growth. I hope you like these. Whenever you're down, out in the cold, faithless and dark, your story's untold. Come take my hand and walk there with me. I know a place where we can be free. There is a light shining for you. Guiding now we're headed into our very last DIY, and this one is really more so a hack. This is when I first remembered that I had those beautiful essential stencils, and that pack is called Rustic Summer Flowers, the one that has all the beautiful flowers in there. We're going to start off with this large size pot, and I got this one at the Dollar General, and it was $4. I have a succulent that I got on clearance at the end of summer last year from Walmart, and that thing has grown to be over two foot tall, and I needed to put a stake in it and tie it up so that it doesn't break. And this is the perfect pot to put it in. Now, this pot, as you see, is just plain black. It does have a, like a, a pattern embossed on the top, but it's just not jazzy enough for me. So what I did was lay down the little picture of all the flowers, and I started off on the right side. And if you'll notice, I'm not allowing the rest of the stencil to lay down yet. That's because the way that this pot has the up and down motion, you have to go into each of the little grooves to make sure that you get it on there correctly. That's why I was saying you can put a transfer on anything, but you just have to take your time and figure out the best way to apply it. I just know that if I would have laid this transfer down and went ahead and stuck the whole thing to the pot, that the areas that go down in the grooves, it would have like torn the, the transfer and it just wouldn't have looked right. That's why I did it like this and I would go on the 
you know, the up part of the planner and then go down in the little groove. It just made it so much easier for me to apply it that way. And then I went be crazy. But hey, I'm wanting to use up this stash that I have and I absolutely love these little bees. They are a small size and they're so cute. You can put them on the flowers and it looks like the little bee has landed on the flower. It's so pretty. I ended up using two smaller bees and one big one up toward the top. Now I'm going to use Big Top, which is a great sealer that comes from DIY paint. And I'm going to put it over this whole planter. The reason why I'm doing that is because I do have to seal my transfer but if I just seal the transfer when it dries, I was afraid that the pot might look funny. So I just went ahead and made sure that I just put it over the whole pot so it would all look cohesive. Next, I grabbed that new line of paint called Painterly. And Lori sent me like samples of all the different colors because she wasn't sure if I would use them or not since I'm so used to the regular DIY paint line. It's clay-based, whereas these are not. And so I went through on the area that was embossed and I used this beautiful bright color called Poetic Pink. I thought that that would look really good with the pink that's in the flowers of the transfer. Then I went through with my heat gun and I dried it down because you know the regular DIY paint, when you dry it, it becomes so much lighter. So I thought that these might also, because I really wasn't crazy about that bright color on this, this pot. Now, it has its place on different projects, but not necessarily on this pot. So then I thought, well, let's just kind of use this paste that I have that's Pentart, and it's the one called Chameleon. It's like a pearl white, and I went over the hot pink, and I still wasn't satisfied, so then I used the green color of the paste. Now, these are the paste that I told you that I compare to Rub and Buff. I think they do the exact same thing. They even smell a lot alike, and I love the way that the green looked because that's actually a vine and some flowers that I was embossing up there. So I went through with my finger and just kind of went all over the rim to give it that little green touch here and there, just where I thought it would look good. Then I took this Dollar Tree pen from Crafter Square and it's white and I just went over the little scalloped edges and just, just for something different. The planter just seemed very plain to me when it was black and I just wanted to jazz it up a little bit. Now, to be honest with you, none of the colors that I put on the top was really doing it for me. If I would have used that bronze color that I like so much, it may have been the ticket. But I really liked the way that the green looked up there, so I decided to finish it off by adding a lot more of the green to the top. And I hope you like this one. Well, guys, we're at the end of the video, and I hope that you did like these projects. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite of all the different ones that I did. Now, these planners that I showed you can be used, like I said, for real flowers or fake. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget, if you're interested in the giveaway, I'm giving away an IOD transfer Number one, you have to be a subscriber. And number two, you just have to go down to the comment section and put the word transfer. That way I know you want to have a chance to win it. I'll pick the winner next Monday and I will announce it on that video. 
My videos are every Monday and Thursday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time because we are in the summertime hours. And I will be making some more projects with this old stash I have. And I'll see you back here real soon. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. And if you did enjoy this video, I have another one right here in the series that I've been doing. All you have to do is just go push on the video and it will take you there when this one's finished. Also, you can push on my face and subscribe to my channel. And I would love it if you would do that. Have a blessed day.